Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this video is called the U.S. Copyright Office Issues Rules for Generative AI. So a few weeks ago, the U.S. Copyright Office issued a policy for the use of generative AI artwork with respect to copyright. It's called Copyright Registration Guidance, Works Containing Material Generated by Artificial Intelligence. So I hope you get a chance to read the policy, but I wanted to give you the TLDR here. So two notes before getting started. First, legal disclaimer, I am not a lawyer. I'm not offering any legal advice or interpretation. I'm simply reading a policy offered by the Copyright Office and adding some personal commentary. I've done a bunch of research to make sure everything I'm saying is correct, but it's possible I might have missed something. So if so, let me know in the comments and I'll find a way to correct any issues. And second, this is defined as the policy of the Copyright Office. Future laws and lawsuits and things could change their policy in the future. But for right now, this is what their policy is. So the first big takeaway from the policy is, in the office's view, it is well established that copyright can protect only material that is the product of human creativity. So the Copyright Office asks whether the work is basically one of human authorship, with a computer merely being an assisting instrument, or whether the traditional elements of authorship in the work, literary, artistic, or musical expression, or elements of selection and arrangement, were actually conceived and executed not by a man, but by a machine. So with that base, the next big thing they say is that a piece of AI-generated art cannot be copyrighted, and that a prompt isn't sufficient to count as human artistry. So they say, when an AI technology receives solely a prompt from a human and produces complex written visual or musical works in response, the traditional elements of authorship are determined and executed by the technology, not by the human user. These prompts function more like instructions to a commissioned artist. They identify what the prompter wishes to have depicted, but the machine determines how these instructions are implemented in its output. So in short, if you put a prompt into a piece of AI software like this one, a biomechanical warlord from outer space, this image cannot be copyrighted. So another explicit example they give is if a comic book has AI art but a human written text, the text can be copyrighted, but the art cannot. So the next big point in the policy is if you photobash a piece of art using elements generated by an AI, that can be copyrighted, but the elements themselves can't be copyrighted. So another artist can take the same elements and photobash their own image from them. And they say, for example, a visual artist who uses Adobe Photoshop to edit an image remains the author of the modified image, and a musical artist may use effects such as guitar pedals when creating a sound recording. In each case, what matters is the extent to which the human had creative control over the work's expression and actually formed the traditional elements of authorship. So as a personal example, I used, I believe, Midjourney to create these three images, and I gave it the prompt, Alien Spider Legs Made of White Reptile Skin and Lumps. So these three images definitely cannot be copyrighted. But then I went and I removed elements from them, and these elements, you might be able to make a legal argument that these can be copyrighted because I've technically changed the image, but personally I don't think that's really the case. I think that these probably are also not copyrightable because they're still basically just pieces from the original AI-generated image. But then this image here, where I took those elements and other elements and also hand-painted and did a bunch of other stuff to create this creature, this can be copyrighted because I put a lot more of my own spin on things in the way that I arranged the pieces and then painted on top of it. Now this example isn't given specifically in the policy, but uh, the image that is on the left, that is an image that I painted using a combination of hand paint and photos and uh, 3D, and that one is copyrightable. And then I took that and I gave it as an image prompt to Midjourney that created the one in the middle. And then that generated image I took and I modified, changed, painted over, added some more photo elements and got the image that is on the right. So the image on the left is definitely copyrightable. The image on the right is definitely copyrightable. The middle one, I'm not completely sure about. Again, just because they don't mention it specifically. I suspect it is copyrightable simply because you used an image prompt instead of a text prompt, and so therefore you had more control over the final image. But that would definitely be a good experiment to do. Send something like this to the Copyright Office and see what they say. So before continuing with the policy, I wanted to do a little bit of extra work here to talk about the difference between copywriting art and copywriting a character. So in this example, we have Spider-Man, and this is the very first uh, comic that Spider-Man appeared in. And the artwork for the comic book is copyrighted, but then on top of that, the character is also copyrighted. 
And so what this means is that if I were to make an exact copy of the art itself, uh, I can't copyright that because I've taken it from copyrighted work. And then the character itself, I also can't copyright because it's already copyrighted. Now let's say that I made a brand new painting of Spider-Man doing something. That artwork can't be copyrighted because even though I did the artwork, it's using a copyrighted character. And then the character itself, once again, can't be copyrighted because it's already been copyrighted by Marvel. So here's another example, and then this one is in the public domain. So this is a picture of the Mona Lisa, uh, the painting. And because it's in the public domain, it's no longer copyrighted, I can paint an exact duplicate of it. And in fact, I can even put my name at the bottom of it if I wanted to. And as long as I don't claim that it is the Mona Lisa by Da Vinci and it's the Mona Lisa by Neil Blevins, I can copyright that piece of artwork. But because it's based on a public domain art, that means that somebody else can come along and they can paint their own version of the Mona Lisa that looks exactly the same, and they can copyright that as well. So potentially there could be hundreds of exact replicas or almost exact replicas of the Mona Lisa, each one copyrighted because it's based on a public domain piece of art. Now let's move over to books for a second. So you may not know this, but the character of Sherlock Holmes and his very first book are both in the public domain. And what that means is that I can write a brand new Sherlock Holmes book by Neil Blevins, and I can even copyright that book and sell it, and it's totally fine. Now I can't copyright the character because the character is a public domain character. And that means that somebody else, they can also write a brand new Sherlock Holmes book, and they can copyright that book, but then once again, they can't copyright the character because the character is in the public domain. So there's no way for me to stop them from using that character, even though I've written a book about that character. So how does this relate to AI artwork? Well, by reading the policy and by doing the research on uh, public domain images, I believe this is the way it's gonna work. So say you're a big video game company and you have a character you wanna make for your video game. So let's say that I'm somebody who works at the company and I produce a piece of artwork by typing in a text prompt, which then gets turned into this particular piece of artwork. So because it's not copyrightable, that means that this image and the character design are both in the public domain. And that means that I could make a brand new painting. Uh, as a human, I could do a brand new painting of the same warlord. Uh, and that character cannot be copyrighted because it's based on a public domain character. I can, however, copyright the art because I produced the art. And in the same way as the other examples, that means that somebody else from outside of my company, if they had that original image or saw that original image generated by the computer, they could also paint their own version of that character. And while they can copyright the art itself, they can't copyright the character because once again, the character is in public domain. This is why I think the job of concept artist won't be going away. Companies need characters, vehicles, and other designs so that they can have full copyright over and make sure that other people don't copy. That being said, the job of concept artist might become the job of painting over AI-generated artwork just enough that it's considered a new design. So the job may change enough that people don't enjoy doing it anymore, and then they don't strive to become concept artists. And then, of course, also it's important to mention that it might become the case where big companies hire fewer concept artists because the computer is doing more of the work. But this is stuff that only time will tell. So getting back to the policy, there are two more points that I think are big. So first of all, when applying for copyright, it is the duty of the applicant to say they used AI and in what capacity so the office can decide if this is appropriate use of the software for copyright purposes. So that means when you apply for the copyright itself, you have to actually put in there what you did so that they can make a decision about whether it's copyrightable or not. And in the same way, it says many times in the policy the words case-by-case -case basis. And so basically what they're doing is they're saying that there's so many different ways AI could produce an image or be used to help produce an image that the office reserves the right to make a separate judgment on each individual instance, including new techniques that haven't even been invented yet. And it's worth noting, of course, that people could lie. They could go for the copyright and say they didn't use AI when they really did use AI. But of course, doing that, they're risking the possibility that somebody might find out. And if they do, you could see their copyright go away. And then finally, the question of can AI be legally trained on copyrighted work is still not resolved, but they are looking into it. I suspect this question will be answered through litigation, or specifically two lawsuits, including the one brought by Getty Images and the class action lawsuit brought on by Sarah Anderson, Kelly McKernan, and Carla Ortiz. But even if the lawsuits fail and it's deemed legal to train an AI on copyrighted material, 
That won't change the fact that the imagery generated is uncopyrightable unless substantially enhanced by an artist. Changing that decision by the Copyright Office, I believe, would require a brand new law that is separate from the current lawsuits. So I hope you get a chance to read the policy, and I know this stuff can be a little bit dry, but the reality is, is if you are going to make a living off of making artwork, this is the kind of stuff that you really need to know so that you can properly protect yourself when you're creating a new character or a new book or a new piece of artwork or whatever. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this. And uh, feel free to go to neilblevins.com and go to the art lesson section if you want to see more tutorials, articles, and videos like this one. And feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video. Thank you very much.